Hey guys! Today we're going to be reading chapters 5 and 6 of Fantastic Mr. Fox by Roald Dahl. Chapter 5 is called The Terrible Tractors. As the sun rose the next morning, Bogus, Bunce, and Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house into it, but they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel. They were all very tired and cross. Dang and blast, said Bogus. Whose rotten idea was this? Bean's idea, said Bunce. Bogus and Bunce both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of cider, then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to the others. Listen, he said angrily, I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving in till I've strung him up over my front porch, dead as a dumpling. We can't get him by digging, that's for sure, said the fat Bogus. I've had enough of digging. Bunce was the little pot-bellied dwarf, looked up at Bean and said, Have you got any more stupid ideas then? What? said Bean. I can't hear you. Bean never took a bath. He never even washed. As a result, his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck and wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and stuff like that. This made him deaf. Speak louder, he said to Bunce. And Bunce shouted back, Got any more stupid ideas? Bean rubbed the back of his neck with his dirty finger. He had a boil coming there, and it itched. What we need on this job, he said, is machines, mechanical shovels. We'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels. Ew, look at that. Gross. This was a pretty good idea, and the other two had to admit it. All right, then, Bean said, taking charge. Bogus, you stay here and see the fox doesn't escape. Bunce and I will go and fetch our machinery. If he tries to get out, shoot him quick. The long, thin bean walked away. The tiny bunch trotted after him. The fat Bogus stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Soon, two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels on their front ends came clanking into the woods. Bean was driving one and Bunce was driving the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous, brutal-looking monsters. Here we go, then, shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Bunce. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr. Fox had dug his hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides, rocks were set flying and trees were falling, and the noise was deafening. There's the machines. Cutting up the woods and the dirt. Down in the tunnel, the foxes crouched, listening to the terrible clanging and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? cried the small foxes. What are they doing? Mr. Fox didn't know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs. Fox. Look, look, said one of the small foxes. Our tunnel's gotten shorter. I can see daylight. They all looked around, and yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now, and in the circle of daylight beyond they could see the two huge black tractors almost on top of them. <gasps> tractors? shouted Mr. Fox. And mechanical shovels? Dig for your lives! Dig! 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 Chapter 6. The Race Now, there began a desperate race, the machines against the foxes. In the beginning, the hill looked like this. After about an hour, as the machines bit away more and more soil from the hilltop, it looked like this. Sometimes the foxes would gain a little ground and the clanking noises would grow fainter. And Mr. Fox would say, we're going to make it. I'm sure we are. But then a few moments later, the machines would come back. And then, and then a crunch of the mighty shuffles would get louder and louder. Once the foxes actually saw the sharp metal edge of one of the shovels as it scraped up the earth just behind them. Keep going, my darlings, panted Mr. Fox. Don't give up. Keep going, the fat bogus shouted to Bunce and Bean. We'll get him any moment now. Have you caught sight of him yet? Bean called back. Not yet, shouted Bogus, but I think you're close. I'll pick him up with my bucket, shouted Bunce. I'll chop him to pieces. But by lunchtime... The machines were still at it, 
and so were the poor foxes. The hill now looked like this. The farmers didn't even stop for lunch. They were too keen to finish the job. Hey there, Mr. Fox, yelled Bunce, leaning over his tractor. We're coming to get you now. You've had your last chicken, yelled Bogus. You'll never come prowling around my farm again. A sort of madness had taken a hold of the three men. The tall, skinny, skinny bean and dwarfish pot-bellied bunts were driving their machines like maniacs, racing the motors and making the shovels dig at terrific speed. The fat bogus was hopping about like a dervish and shouting, Faster! Faster! But by five o'clock in the afternoon, this is what had happened to the hill. The hill is not a hill anymore. The hole the machines had dug was like the crater of a volcano. It was such an extraordinary sight that crowds of people came rushing out from the surrounding villages to have a look. They stood on the edge of the crater and stared down at Bogus and Bunce and Bean. Hey there, Bogus! What's going on? We're after a fox. You must be mad! The people jeered and laughed, but this only made the three farmers more furious and more obstinate, and more determined than ever to give up until they had caught the fox. They were never going to give up. All right, there's all the people watching this craziness go on. That's all for chapter five and six. Bye!